Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with some more Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. And today, I'm hoping that you've got the new DLC, giving you access to the Maltese and the Italians. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you the Maltese top to bottom beginner's guide so you can jump straight into the game. You have a rough idea of what you need to do, and I'm hoping that you can really just appreciate and enjoy this civilization because it is truly unique and awesome. And one of the, I've got to say, this DLC is one of the best yet. So we're going to be breaking it down to three parts as usual with these guys. First is looking at unique features, buildings and units. Second is a sort of deck and BO or build order summary. And then finally, we're going to be taking that summary and going into nice, crucial detail and a nice casted replay. So I hope you guys really enjoy this. And without further ado, let's do it. Right, without further ado, let's jump into the unique features, units and buildings for the civilization. I'm not going to touch upon this too much. I want to get into the build order deck and also the casted replay as well for you guys. So let's jump straight into it. And we can see, if we scroll down, the Civ features here, the home city, the Valata. The, uh, we start with a Grand Master, which is your explorer. A lot, a really sort of buffed explorer compared to the standard European ones. And also this is super crucial here. Units gain additional HP with each shipment, which is 2%, and heal over time when idle. Also, we can see the starting units. We get the Grand Master, of course, five settlers four crates of food, two cord of wood, and one chest of wood. Interesting, chest of wood. That's definitely chest of wood gold so we can see that and this really helps you open up with a nice tp or market start with hunting dogs and we'll go more into that later on in the video let's have a look at some of the unique buildings we do have the hospital of course basically the barracks costing you 100 wood giving you access to two unique units there the hospitaler and the sentinel we can see as well a nice picture here of the commandery which is essentially a stables that can unlock new units to recruit using tongue cards which are specific unique cards to the maltese and also if you have more than one commandery you can use them to teleport units with their special ability so kind of wild and we'll touch upon that in a little bit more detail later on and you can see that it costs 250 wood and 100 coin one crazy thing here as well is the depot which actually gives um yeah it's filled to the brim with gunpowder it boosts the attack speed of nearby gunpowder units artillery and buildings but it will explode if destroyed damaging all units so that's whether it's on the enemy team or your team it will destroy those units and it will take damage very very cheap building 50 wood 50 coin and i think this can be used a lot in the meta i think you know really using this for maybe an aggressive play and also defensive as well so let's see how that one works out moving on we've got this fantastic spectacular building here or you could say fixed artillery gun that costs 100 wood but 600 coin absolutely huge coin value there a powerful stationary artillery if we come down looking at some of the unique units the grandmaster that we've mentioned the hospitaler is basically like an aoe sort of pikeman essentially they are faster near buildings though so once again this is something unique to the maltese certain units get buffed when they are next to fortifications or buildings which sort of lends the maltese to more defensive play which i mentioned at the start the Sentinel, which is the sort of musketeer unit, once again, stronger near buildings, especially fortifications. We have a fire thrower here, light infantry, attacks with incendiary weapons, inflicting burning damage, and that counters heavy infantry and light cavalry. So basically like a skirmisher unit with a AOE burn damage. And here we do see some of the home city cards. I'm not going to go into these too much detail because I've actually got a video where I cover all of the Maltese cards. Some of them have changed because there's been recent patches. Every single day there's slight tweaks and patches until the actual full DLC releases. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on these. We do see the tongue cards, which is the one that I mentioned. And that is pretty much it in a nutshell, guys. So without further ado, let's jump in to the sort of deck summary and build order summary before we jump into the casted replay of the sort of standard quote unquote standard build order for the Maltese. Right guys I present to you the build order so at the top you can see from left to right this is the order of the cards that we're going to be going for in the replay coming up however you can probably see that the last three items are slightly transparent and that is because these can change you know it there's a lot of things in games depending on if your opponent is aggressive defensive what kind of sieve what kind of map lots of things change 
change. However, what is for certain is definitely the first three and four cards. We're going to be playing quite an eco defensive play style in this. And that's kind of how the multis really work and work their best at the moment in the current state that they are. And as you can see, there is a deck down below as well that's been chosen. And of course, some of these can change and you can probably chop and change a lot of these as well. But hopefully this will give you a good start. So without further ado, let's jump in to the replay. Right guys, you find me on the battlefield here demonstrating a nice juicy Maltese build order for you. Quite straightforward, standard sort of opening you could say. I say standard, it is a brand new civilization so a lot of things most likely will change in the future. But hopefully this will help you get stuck into the Maltese and give them a go. So thankfully Revnak provided me with this replay and he is playing against Elite Rifleman here. And he basically said to me, Widgie, this is going to be a nice standard straightforward order that hopefully your viewers can follow and enjoy it. At the moment, the Maltese are in kind of a strange position. You know, a lot of people say they are relatively weak. I 100%, you know, I, I, I can't say for 100% because I haven't played the Maltese enough to verify that, but I understand where people are coming from. So hopefully there will be changes in the future, but let's jump into this and let's see what Revnak is doing. So he's going for a market start and he's going to be getting hunting dogs immediately while putting down a house. So I think there is another option you can do here, which is the house and TP start, but looks like he's going for the house market and then hunting dogs. So all he's doing is simply just gathering up food. He's making sure his herding is good and he's leaving that coin there. You can just gather them all up if you want to. Um, he's just left it there because you know, Revnak knows he doesn't need it yet until age two. And if you spend time gathering coin that you don't need, it's wasting time for you to gather your food and age up. So it's just kind of a, like a little sort of min-max thing there. I wouldn't worry about that too much. We do see his explorer here. He is going to be grabbing 100 food, which is going to be absolutely amazing. Is he going to be able to do it though? I mean, this is looking a little sketchy. I think he's going to be fine because the explorer here is... A very, very beefy explorer indeed. 500 HP, not to be messed with, and he's going to be able to take that down and grab the 100 food. So I'm going to try to not cast this too much. I'm going to try to use it as a as an opening for you. So the first card is the Three Settlers. So let's have a look at Revnax deck here. He does have the German Tongue. Now, as I mentioned, the Tongue cards, basically what they do is when you get these Tongue cards, it enables you to create the unit that that tongue provides from your commandery. Now your commandery is essentially a stables, but it unlocks units to upgrade if you get these tongue cards. And also if you build a second commandery, you can use it to essentially teleport units around the map. I'm not even joking, you can do that. So we can see here he's doing a very, very good age up here. Look at this, with that 100 food treasure, that's really helping him out. But I, I would, you know, try and aim for around three minutes if you can to age up but he's going to be able to start clicking up not even like before two minutes 30 which is absolutely insane and he is going for the quartermaster which is 400 wood so quite a popular age up to go for as a euro sieve and he looks like he's pretty much putting all vills over to wood and he's also getting the gang saw upgrade there from the market so we can see that this is the deck. He's gone for three settlers first. So pretty much all vills have gone over to wood. He's got a gang saw, so it enables him to get wood even faster. And we're going to see what Revnak is up to here. He might actually be going for the German tongue, you know. He might be doing it. I, I see a lot of people that don't do that. Some people say that it's not worth it. But it looks like Revnak is going to be going for it. We're going to be seeing that German tongue action. Looks like he's macroing for the 500 wood. Elite Rifleman, on the other hand, has gone for a TP. And now he has his card available. And he's got that five. Yeah, he's going for it. He's going for the German Tongue, which gets you two Settler Wagons and the Commandery Wagon, of course. And you can get a maximum of six of those Settler Wagons. And they, I believe, yeah, they cost 100 food and 100 wood. And the Quartermaster is going to enable Revnak to be able to train some more of those settler wagons. So let's see what he does here. He's got his 400 wood in. He's obviously getting his settlers up. And his German tongue is going to be coming in very shortly. And hopefully this is a build order you guys can use. Hopefully it is. It is quite greedy from the look of it because you do have to chop a lot of wood and it does take a lot of time. And with that 400 wood, he's enabling him to get these steel traps which is the 125 wood and 125 gold. So that's going to increase his 
food gathering rate even further. And that German tongue is going to come in very soon. There's not much else, I think, yet. Yeah, he's going to be putting a trade post down now with that with that 400 wood. There the commandery wagon is and the two settler wagons. Basically buffed settlers. They gather wood a lot faster, you can see. 0.55, but 1.1. So they're basically two settlers. So that's basically four settlers there, you could say. And the commandery is going down. And remember, the commandery has a ranged attack. So try and place it defensively, especially if you're going for this kind of build order, which is obviously more of an economical build order. There is no sort of military building down just yet. However, the commandery will be the first one. And now we do have the TP built. It looks like Revnax is going to be grabbing this treasure here as well, another 75 food. And look, he's now moved all those back over to wood again because he wants to macro to start training more settler wagons from the commander. You'll see when he builds this, it will be available. You can't actually see it on here, but you can see now, there we go, one settler wagon has now been queued. And the next card is going to be the Wigner Court. Now, this is a crucial, crucial card for Malta. I think this is a you've got to have this in your deck. It increases natural resources uh, or gather rate of by 30% when nearby either a TC, outpost, or commandery. So, got to bear that in mind. And of course, every single home shipment card that you use will increase all uh, HP of your Maltese units by 2%. So, that's one of the um, unique bonuses. We do see a wall here going up by Revnak, but you don't have to do a wall. You don't have to be uh, someone who walls. But we do see now the... Um, Second commandery being built there. That is being built. Um, yeah, I think he just actually just built that. Yeah. He just built a second commandery there so he can train these settler wagons a little bit quicker, I think. And also, as I say, they do provide 30 ranged attack. So that's what we're seeing right now. And he's just continuing with sort of the wood and food macro so he can get as many of these settlers out as possible. It's getting a house because these um, these settler wagons do cost two population. And what do we see? We do see some pressure. So let's see how this is going to be sort of dealt with. Let's see how Revnak is going to deal with this. Because this is going to happen with you guys. You're most likely going to be under a little bit of pressure. We do see some order longbow coming in, which is an age two card, which gets you eight longbow. And he's opening up with the pike as well. Elite rifleman going to see what he can do. Not much. The commander is doing a pretty good job. And he's got five settler wagons, so I think he's just producing his last one. And then that is it. Then it's time to go over to the military side. And we do now see a hospital being put down. They only cost 100 wood. This is the, once again, the uh, barracks equivalent for the Maltese. And he's got 700 wood on the way. Still a lot of settlers on wood here. And he is going to be training the crossbowmen. Which is really your only real skirm unit that you can create as the Maltese. And he's going to be building a second hospital. Always make sure to build a couple of these because they only cost 100 wood each. And they do heal nearby units. So always make sure to, to build another one. Don't just, keep, don't just stick with one. You can use them quite a lot. And he's now maxed his settler wagons. Unfortunately, Revnak losing a villager there. Getting a bunch of crossbowmen out. 700 wood is now down as well. To help with crossbow production. He's just going to be relying on the commanderies here to provide that ranged fire. And also the TC as well. He's got 10 vils in there, which you don't need any more than 10 vils in a TC if you want it to fire its maximum damage. That's also something to bear in mind. So you can see here he's got 30 damage, 30 damage, and 90 damage. So a lot of fire here from, from the buildings. And um, I don't know if Elite Rifleman is going to be able to, to do a lot here. Another house going down. And he is training another bunch of crossbowmen with that wood that he's got. He's got another card available. What is Revnak going to be going for? He's not going to be going for a unit shipment card, I don't think. He is going to be going for the 700 gold. Now doing a pretty good job here, playing quite defensively. Because th this is how you kind of need to play Maltese at the moment, I think. Unfortunately, you know, I'm hoping that there's... I'm sure there is some sort of more aggressive play. But I think this is one of the go-to sort of ways. This is how the Civ sort of works. It is a very defensive Civ. The Commander is providing the ranged attack, of course. Um, the Sentinels, which are the Musketeer unit, um, they buff when they're near walls or outposts. And also... 
commanderies, outposts, and TCs provide economic bonuses to your villagers. So it encourages you to build those kind of buildings. So it encourages you to play that kind of style. So if you're not interested or you're not too fond of that style of play, maybe Italy is for you more than Maltese at the moment. I'm not too sure. But the 700 coin has come out now and he is building a second commandery. He's just going for it. He's really spamming out these commanderies because he wants to get, you can see that little ring, that little ring of um, green. That is now providing that bonus gather rate and he wants to put that down to make sure he's got it. And also, as I said before, they do provide a nice range attack as well. And I think these are worth building more than an outpost, to be honest with you. So it looks like he's going to be going into H3 now. So, you know, it's sort of, you could say, like a semi-FF style here. Um, opening up with 10 or 15 crossbowmen. Just holding the fort, essentially, with the commanderies. And, and he is going to be garrisoning some of those vills there. He's creating the crossbowmen again. But he is getting into H3 and he's going to be going up with the bishop. Which I believe gives you another TC. So he's going quite sort of eco-driven here. And he did a nice little TP there. Did you see that? That little noise? That was a TP. So he TP'd or teleported his uh, vills from this commandery into here. And they popped out this side, which is quite cool. But he's got so much eco now. You know, five settler wagons. I think he can train another one. You know? Yeah, he is training one. Yeah, I think he may have lost one. So this is how sort of Maltese play. You know, they do rely a lot on the crossbowmen. And uh, we do see there are some crossbow, like steel bolts, for example, is a crossbowman upgrade. And he needs to be careful here because the uh, order longbow are going to outrange the crossbows quite significantly. So Revnak still waiting for that age up. He's got a card available and he is making the order hussars, which you make from the commanderies. So the commandery is essentially a stables, really. It's a stables that can teleport. And also unlock new units to create when you ship the tongue cards. So he's actually losing a lot of crossbowmen here. But I, I don't know what Revnak's doing here. I don't know whether he's distracting or just trying to buy some time. But yeah, he lost a lot of crossbowmen there. So he needs to be careful. Elite Rifleman doing a pretty good job with the whole longbow pike play here from Maltese. Which is nice to see. And you can see the macro split is kind of unusual. Sort of like a... Very split across because of the fact that he's making crossbowmen and he's making hussars. So he needs demand for all resources right now. He needs demand for food, wood and gold. And he's going to have to try and split, which can be a little tricky. The uh, yeah, the covered wagon has come out now. The TC wagon has come out. And now yes. he's going to be getting the next shipment, which is going to be 12 crossbow units. Hey. And they are coming in. I imagine maybe next could be steel bolts to increase his crossbowmen. He always dancing around here with the hussars and the pike. Woo! And um, yeah, he's just going to try and clear up those pike, I think. I think he should be able to do it. And now, trust me, these five hussars will clear up quite a lot. I mean, the order hussars are ridiculously powerful compared to normal ones. I mean, 416 HP is pretty darn impressive and the eight crossbow are coming and they're going to give a two percent there it is just two percent and that that two percent is on the base hp of your unit so it doesn't apply it on the on the other one so we do see a fixed gun coming in look at this a fixed gun wagon is on the way gonna be uh seeing that in action and uh, Revnat being able to clear up all these longbowmen here just with the Hussars. It just shows how powerful they are. And now he's got his economy going. You know, he's, he's had to play quite defensive. Go for a semi-FF sort of style with the with the commanderies. And um, he's sort of come out on top here. He's doing pretty well. Elite Rifleman still in age two. Not looking the best right now. Kind of has his... He's got his covered wagon all the way, but he hasn't actually put his TC down yet. I love it. Going to be clearing up those pipemen just with the Hussars. Now the fixed gun is here. And looks like he's going to be building a TC here. He's going to be building one and also putting one down. Wow. Really going for it. Real sort of eco-driven sieve this is. Very turtley, eco-y sieve. That sort of pays off, I think, a little bit later on in the game. If you can survive, if you can play defensive and do it, 
it can work. And I think this fixed gun here is going to go as as close to Elite Rifleman's base as possible. And that's going to lock down now um, Elite Rifleman. He's got his commandery here. Okay, he's going to be putting the fixed gun here. An interesting spot for it. Oh, he doesn't want to lose it, I think. I think he just wants to put it anywhere. Is he, is he going to move it? He might move it now. No, he's not. He's going to leave it there. Okay. That's going to go down there. And we do now see an upgrade for the crossbowman, of course. Are we going to see steel bolts? I don't know. And that fixed gun doing an immense amount of damage. 300 damage. There it goes. Fixed gun just going to be doing what it can. His range is pretty impressive. What is his range? 34 range. So yeah, look. It just looks really funny as it goes like, woo, as it arcs. It's really strange. So we do see uh, some Hospitalers have been popped. Elite Rifleman is now in age 3. And um, unfortunately, I, I don't think it's going to be enough here. Revnak has got a serious amount of units. He's got more Hussars on the way. I think using the Order Hussars in your composition is really crucial with the Maltese because they are so much better than the standard Hussar and they really don't cost that much extra, to be honest. And it uh, looks like we are going to be having a trade here. How is this going to go? Hussar on Hussar with some crossbows in the middle. And we do see further units, another batch of five Hussars. And I think it's just coming down to, to eco right now. You know, uh, Revnak on 40, Elite Rifleman only on 28. And remember, Revnak has six of those Vils are Settlers, which are basically double. So he's kind of got like 46. So his eco is out of control right now. And um, he has the lead. However, there are some fire throwers coming in. So he does need to be careful here. I don't know how good the fire throwers are. Not going to lie. I don't know how good they are. I sort of had them in my deck and then I took them out. I'm not too sure. Thousand wood on the way. And I think after that, most likely would, would follow steel bolts, maybe, or maybe arca archaic combat. We've got the uh, veteran crossbows. You rarely see the veteran crossbows. They look very nice. And there we go. There we go, ladies and gents. That is an example game. Not one playing against AI. I know a lot of people say about these beginner guys. It's like, oh, I want to see a build or the way you play against AI an actual person well this game is just a true example of that you know this is one style of play with the Maltese of course I think this is one could be one of the kind of standard openings where you do go for the German tongue you do go for it even though it's 500 wood you get two settler wagons you get the commandery and then you get the ability to create four more which essentially as we've mentioned are two settlers each for these settler wagons so I think it's a good way to go if you want to go more of a defensive eco build. Whereas Elite Rifleman went more for a timing attack. He went for the um, the British tongue card that gives you eight longbows, I believe. Eight longbows and one commandery. And he pushed out like that. But we have seen other ones where you get Sentinels, which are the Musketeer unit. And you just produce those as much as you can in age two. So there's many different ways that you can play them. And overall... The Civ is a little bit weak at the moment. I think there still needs to be a few changes here and there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of build order. I will be now putting the deck on there for you and the order that Revnak got the cards out so you can have a rough idea. And um, yeah, just, just bear in mind that when you build the commanderies, build them close to the TC, you want to kind of play quite defensive with this build order. I hope you guys really enjoyed this and I hope you use some of this to help yourself understand Maltese and get to grips with them, basically.